everyone welcome back to RTS and guess what today is it is the first day we're going to start on our series as far as actually creating something so if you looked in Tuesday's video we built our kit and we cut our papers and so today we are going to actually start working on the first of our four layouts so if you remember today we're going to do a layout with one photo and then on Saturday we're going to do our next layout with two photos but does that mean you have to do it that way no because I'm going to show you different options so honestly <laughs> it's not going to be hard to do this and i wish we had like a big gallery that we could see what everybody was creating because everybody's page will be different but it's all going to be a basic design and we build from there okay so layout one what are we going to do and if you're two page gal hang on you know i'm going to talk to you too so oh, i think something just went flying what was that i don't know okay i think it was a piece of my hair okay Oh, see, hair's in a bun and we're having fun. That's what it is. Okay, so I have my 12 by 12 here for my first layout and I have my photo picked out. Okay, and this is going to be a story-based photo for me. And this is one thing I want to say. It doesn't matter what type of kit you build. You always find some kind of story or some type of photos that go with it. It just it never fails. I've done it this way for years and I have never struggled trying to find photos. But again, I want to say photos and organizing photos and dealing with photos and printing photos is going to be a regular topic on this channel. So just keep hit that notification button. We have a lot, a lot coming up. So our first page, what are we going to do? Well, remember what I told you not to skip. Remember that step I told you not to skip as far as numbering papers, because this is why it's important. So for our first layout, what we're going to do is we're going to need that six by 12 of your number one paper. My number one paper was that blue floral. And then what we're going to need from your number two paper is this two inch, it's like a by five and a half. Okay, that's a two inch cut. And then from your third paper, we're going to need that same two inch cut. And then from your fourth paper, we're going to need those one inch cuts. Okay, and that is basically how we're going to build this page. Okay, and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that six by 12. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take these and we're going to build our page this way. Now, in and of itself, you think, well, that looks like plain Jane. Well, you just hang on because I have some ideas. Okay. So this is going to be our basic design. And then we have these two things, these two pieces of paper. Now, if you look in my photo, my photo is a horizontal, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to show you what to do because you don't have a, what if you have a vertical? I'm going to show you what to do. Okay, so this is our basic design. I'm going to go to the bare bones. Okay, so you could center this. Okay, this is why I say we're going to make it your own. You could center this. You could flush it down and have one third of the top open. Okay, you could put your title up here. Or you can push this up and you can have one third of the bottom open. You could do a lot of journaling down here. There is no wrong way to do this, but this is the bones. This right here, this is the bones, okay? Now, I have a horizontal photo, but what if you have a vertical photo? You see how this is just like, wow, yes, okay? Again, you could center this. This is our basic bones. You could center that, or you could flush everything to the left a little bit. You could flush everything to the right a little bit. Everybody has a certain way of doing their pages, a certain thing they like, so do what you like. Just start with these bare bones and do it that way. Now this is the vertical, okay? So, but I'm gonna go back to the horizontal because that's what my photo is gonna be. And I noticed that most people will have horizontal sh sh shots versus a vertical. And, and I think that was before iPhones came because before iPhones came, you know, smartphones, most of my photos were in vertical because I don't know if it's a left-handed thing. I just prefer vertical over left-handed, or <laughs> I prefer vertical shots over horizontal shots, okay, for people. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. And for me, I think, for me, I am going to flush mine down a little bit because I think I'm going to put my title up here. I might go up just a tad. That's going to be my bare bones. But again, what were the options? You could slide it up. You could slide it down, you could center it. Three different options, however you want to do it. Then if you're vertical, again, you have three options. Center, flush to the left. Well, come on, puppy, let's move on. Let's get with the program. Flush it to the left, flush it to the right. So whichever you want to do, you have three options. 
Do you see how I said these basic designs were gonna fit everybody? Because everybody's gonna have a different want and feel and desired, you know, a desired result for what they want their page to look like. I think this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. Might move it up a tad. Okay, so here's mine. Now, remember I said I had put two and a half, two eight and a half by 11 sheets in for matting? This is why. I'm gonna mat this in white. I know that because I love matting my photos lately. So I'm going to mat that in white. And then we have these two babies. What are we going to do with these? Well, my one has text, so I'm definitely going to put that over top of the pattern because, you know, you could see the words. Okay? So you could simply do it like this. You could layer it. Or you could do it on the left. Okay? And then what's the other option? Because I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to call. I'm going to keep giving you ideas. <laughs> okay. Actually, let's do something before we even put those. Let me go back to our bare bones again. Okay. I hope I'm in frame. Okay. I need to pay attention there. I get all. I get all excited. Okay. Remember, we pulled out washi. What can you do? Well, after you do your bare bones and you put those three papers on, you have them in here because you don't want them sliding. You can simply take your washi and cover up that seam there seam there. Now remember, we pulled four washies. You could pick two different colors. You could pick one color. Okay? Now, here's another option. You could put that right over your papers and do that seam or that Vanessa trick that I keep saying, which is, what if I have a piece here? Well, pretend this is a 12 inch piece of paper. I would simply go over white cardstock like that and then cut out that. So basically what you're doing is you're taking your washi and you're making a border sticker. That's what you're doing. Okay. So remember how I said we're going to make this our own. This is how we do it. You can pick any of these four colors and you can cover up those seams. Okay. Now here's the thing. You can go over this seam. You could go over this seam, this seam, and this seam. You could do all of them. It's however you want. Okay. But if you don't want to do the washi, Remember, just with the washi, you have two different ways. You can go directly to paper, put it on cardstock, and then put it on. Okay? Or, remember what I said, we had border stickers. Okay? You could do the same thing. Oh, I'm just, I'm just getting so excited. Okay. Okay. So, you could simply do that. Okay? Now, if washi wasn't your thing, if border stickers isn't your thing, now you know what we had left. What was the third one? We had ribbon. You could do your ribbon option if you wanted to do that. Do you see? You could cover that. Or if you pulled washi and ribbon, why not mix both? Maybe put washi up here. And I don't want to, I love this red graph grid. Of course, if I keep on rolling it, I'm going to ruin it. Okay. And then you could put ribbon down here. Okay. And then you could put a border sticker here. Okay. But I'm not done. Okay. Now, some of you will have pulled scraps. So what can you do to dress this up a little bit? Okay, you ready? How about taking a piece of scrap, if you pulled it, if you didn't, hang on. Taking a piece of your scrap, maybe you used a net, you pulled out an edge punch. Okay, if you used an edge punch, if you pulled out an edge punch, you could take a piece of scrap, punch out, and then you could put in a decorative element at the top, at the bottom, wherever you want. I mean, there are so many options just with those few things we pulled to make it your own, okay? So now what did I want to say next? Hmm. There was something on my mind. Had raccoon. Moving on. Moving on. I'll have to move on because I just lost that thought. Okay. So that's what you can do. I mean, so many options right there. You could create 10 different pages just with that right there. Just what I just showed. Honest to goodness. And then after you do the 10, you could turn it and create another 10 pages just with that. Just these three cuts right here. Okay. So now what are we going to add in? We had these two pieces. So, of course, I'm going to mat, and what you can do with these, simply just layer them, layer them. That's all you can do. Now, here's what you can do. You could put your title over this. You could put your title up here, put your journaling here, okay? Or what you can do is you could take your punch that you pulled, maybe make a decorative edge on one of these, and butt them up like that, okay? There's just so many options. Okay, then what you also could do is you could cut these and make them tags, okay, 
which maybe I'll do that with one of mine. I'll cut, maybe I'll cut them into tags and then you could use ribbon, okay? If you had ribbon, if not, you know, you could use some of your washi and do the same thing. You could take a little bit of washi and I'll just tear a piece off here. You could take a piece of washi and make them look like tags, okay? Another option, okay? So that's that. Again, if you're vertical, what are you going to do? You're going to do this. So you had your horizontal, do the same thing. That's exactly what you're going to do. You could, again, use your punch, make a decorative edge. You could make them into tags. You could put washi over. You could put them in ribbon. So many different options. Again, you could put your journaling here and your title here, or your title here and your journaling here. Okay, and we're going to talk about clusters in just a minute. <laughs> okay, but your clusters basically going, are going to depend on where you put put your title and your and your in journaling because those are the two things. The clusters should come at the end because that's the least important part of our page. Okay, so once you do your title and your journaling, okay, or you could put your title here, your journaling down here, and make this an embellishment cluster here. Okay, so I'm going to keep flipping because this is mine. This can be my design, and you can copy exactly what I do. Now, you're going to say, well, what are you going to end up doing? Hmm, well, I think what I'll do is, I like that wording, so I probably will do it like that. I'm, def I'm definitely going to have a mat, and my title's going to go up here, because I might have a longer title. I think I'm going to call this Beagle in the Backpack. I think that's what I'm going to call, because... Um, because that's my story is this precious little puppy with this precious little girl and our high school musical backpack okay so I think that's what we're gonna do. but I know I will incorporate washi or ribbon or both you know look I have these pom-poms <laughs> wouldn't that go with my mood and feel with my high school musical you know that whole thing <sighs> I don't know sometimes this gets a little lump and bump so I have to figure that out okay so now what are we gonna do with the titles you know we already had our alphas picked out so that's good you just pick one of your alphas and figure out where you want to do it now if you want to push this up there's nothing wrong with that you could put your title down here and your journaling up here or you could put your title right on your on your background there is just no wrong way to do this okay I gotta keep making sure I'm in frame okay so you see where our bones are right there that's our bones. Now again, I'm going to go over this one more time because I probably went over that a little fast. This is your number one paper. That's your 6 by 12. Your number two paper was that 2 inch cut. Your number three paper was that 2 inch cut. And your number four paper were these 1 inch cuts. Okay? If you have any questions or you need any help, put it in the comment section. And this is probably how I'm going to do that. So I probably will put, I'm going to put my title here. And of course, you know I'm going to come back with the finished page. And I probably will put maybe a little cluster here. And, mm, you know, I, I have to figure out how much writing I'm going to have. Hmm. But I know my title is going to go there. That's just how, because my title is going to be kind of longer. And I think I might put my journaling down here and cluster here. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think that was all I needed to cover because you have everything you need in your kit as far as your embellishment and your clusters, okay? And what you can do is you can watch how I did my finish page and then maybe you'll get an idea of maybe where you want to do your clusters, but there is no wrong way to do it. Your bones, however you want to do that, okay? And so again, it doesn't matter if you're going to do it horizontal or if you do it vertical. It doesn't matter. It's going to fit everybody. Okay? You could even do this. If you, you could even have a horizontal photo and do it in a vertical fashion simply like this. Isn't that pretty? Put your title up here. Maybe a little cluster here. Maybe you don't have a lot of journaling. That's another option. I mean, there's just no wrong way to do it. And again, I think I wanted to say, maybe I forgot this, and if I repeat, I'm sorry. What you can do is, you know, these, these one-inch pieces, this is what you could take to your border punch. Honestly, you could take that and do that, you know, punch them out. What It depends on what for border punch you picked or what punch you picked. Now, if you didn't pick an edge punch, that's okay. You can use whatever punch you have. And remember, we had something. What did we have? Remember, we had this bonus sheet. Okay, don't forget your bonus sheet. Keep it close by because if you think, well, there's something missing or maybe you didn't like one of those two options, okay? 
you don't like one of those two options or maybe you want to get a, a you know a decorative edge in and additionally with what these use this bonus sheet use it to your benefit that's what it's for it doesn't hurt to use it right off the bat i think that's what i wanted to say earlier and i forgot so you know there's so many different options okay now if you're a two-page gal what are you going to do you're going to do the same thing we did as far as our basic design which is this okay now you're going to have the same option all you're simply going to do is repeat what you did on the left you're going to repeat on the right and i will tell you if you put this in the middle and you have this for a left page and then you have this for a right page boy that makes for a nice design because what you can do because remember you're going to have four of these pieces you could put these up here okay and say you had you know three photos here you know and you put this up here and this could be an anchoring for your title and then for your right hand page okay because you're gonna have the same thing you put it down here and this could be a nice anchoring for your journaling or a nice cluster like, could you still see that? I'm sorry. This could be your right page, okay? So, because you would have double of these to play with. So, on the left, they could be an anchoring for your title. On the right-hand side of your page, you know, the right page, right side of your layout, they could be journaling. Now, do you have to use the horizontal? No. You can, again, do the vertical. Push everything here. And then on your right page, you push everything in. And everything's centered, okay? So, this would be, this would be your left page. And this is what your right page would look like. Okay, another option. Now, it doesn't all have to be centered in the middle. <laughs> okay, you could simply center it over here and, you know, however you want to do it. And then on your right page, you just do the same thing. Okay, and you can get, uh, I don't know, oh man, you could get, again, and with these, you could layer them this way. Okay, and then on the right side of your page, you could put it that way. There's so many different options. And you, since you're doing a two-page spread, you can use however many photos your heart's desires. You could use four, six, eight, whatever you want to do. But you have these pieces to play with, okay, which I think is fun. I mean, honestly, even on this design, you could take these two and put them up here, play with those. Or you could cut them in half if you want to. You know, cut them in half. Put two up here, put two down here. Hmm, that might be an option. I might do that myself. Oh, I need to stop. I'm getting too many ideas. So, okay, two page gals, that's what you're going to do. Whatever you do on the left, you do exactly on the right. It's that you're going to have a bonus. You're going to have extra extra little pieces to play with, okay? Use them for anchors for your titles, anchors for your journaling, or the bases of clusters, okay? And don't be afraid to cut these in half and play with them. Don't be afraid to get out your washies. Play with that. Play with your ribbon or your border stickers or whichever one of those you chose, okay? And then don't forget you have this 12 by 12 option to play with whether you're doing one page or two page let this be your friend let this be your extra little buddy that you have to play with okay and don't forget you pulled out a punch use that okay so i will come back with a finished page and then we'll talk about clusters and again if you have any questions list it below and remember when you pulled all these embellishments your basic design you all the hard thinking is done have fun with your embellishments okay but get that story recorded okay i'll be back with a finished page Okay, I am back with our finished page of layout one for our four for four series. And I'm so excited how this turned out because, well, I'll talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to get the cart before the horse. Okay, so what did I do as far as the basic bones? Well, remember I had the six by 12 and then we had the one by 12s and we just basically just sliding them up and down or sliding left and right, however you wanted to do. And I knew my title was going to be a long, a little long and I had a horizontal shot. So that's the format I chose, but you can do it however you want to do it. There is no wrong way. And if you need any help, you know, just leave it in the comment section below. So what I did was I added a border sticker and I added ribbon. Now to do my ribbon, I, I adhered my 6x12 and then my 1x12. And then I took my score tape and I love score tape for a ribbon. Not red line, score tape. Okay, and I took that right to my navy floral, and then I took my green ribbon. Let me get that back on there. We don't want to ruin that. And I just simply adhered that over. Adhered that right over my score tape. Cut a little extra, and then I put a little score tape on the back. Flipped my ribbon tabs up. Okay, and that'll stay secure. Of course, you can see my brads covered those puppies up. Okay, so then I took a border sticker and I added up here. Now you'll see that there's a little notch here 
And why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. Not all border stickers are cut the same, just like 12 by 12 paper. It's not always 12 by 12. This border sticker, I was going to have a little extra space here. So what I thought, well, I'll just take it to my benefit. I just added, it took my hexagon punch and I just punched a little off, put a little notch there. Of course, it gives a little element right there in my cluster, but that wasn't intended. It was because, and I think these are by Fancy Pants. Fancy Pants border stickers are never 12 inches. And so I had to, you know, I didn't want a gap there. So I just cut a little extra off. Okay. So then, you know, we had those two inch pieces. I think they were two by five and a half. So what I did was, is that I took both of them and I used my punch that I had pulled from my kit and I did a decorative edge on both of them. And then I cut some off because there's no sense using that whole piece if I didn't need to. And then I just use those as layering for my clusters. And I will keep those for, and it'll just go forward to the next page, okay? And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so for my clusters, what I did was I put my title up here. And of course, my embellishments, I got my cluster in here. And I added in word stickers that coincided with my story. And down here with this cluster, again, I used that two by five and a half as a, cluster starter and then I just added some embellishments here of course added a brand and you know with those stickers you have to adhere everything down and then also here for my top cluster that's where I added my journaling and then you see that green that pop of green I'll talk about that in a minute but I want to cover something before I forget so clear here's my journaling a little sticker because then that ties in with my other word stickers and of course brads ties in enamel dots that's my finishing touch so, I have this little heart here on this Tim Holtz pick, and I wanted to show this. I'm going to bring it closer, because some people, I know when I was teaching classes, and I would talk about the visual triangle, and they really didn't know what that meant. And so, what a visual triangle means is that when you see something in a group of three or odd number, and it makes a triangle shape, then it cuts. I'm going to say it completes the circle. <laughs> it doesn't complete the circle, but what it does, it makes your eye continuously go in that triangle. So if you have this little heart, of course, I'm going to use red. Why? Well, I used hearts here and here in my other two clusters, okay? So that's an obvious choice. But then I want to get a pop of red up there. There's no red there, right? So, you know, you can see I have the green and I have the pink and the navy. That's my color scheme. And then I needed a pop of red. So again, you know, if you don't know what to do, look what you already did. Okay, I needed a pop of red. So then you would say, well, now where are you going to put that? You can put this anywhere up here as long as it creates a visual triangle. Okay, I hope I'm holding that close. So that's why I put it on here so you could uh, vis visually see. You could put it here. You could put it there. You could even put it up there. You could even come over here. And I may, I may put it there. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, the further you get away, it's going to be hard to make that connection of that triangle. But you can do it in any way because these three elements, this enamel dot, this bread, and this heart is going to make a visual triangle. And then with the addition of my journaling and the word sticker, that makes my five pieces. Okay, and that's what your eye sees. So I will determine where I'm going to put that. It may be simply right there underneath that afternoon. I might put it right there, somewhere around there. Watch it now, it won't come off. But I think I might put it somewhere right there. But Because I want to get that pop of red in. And so you see the red here. The further I go over, that means it's going to extend, extend your eye the further you can go over. Okay, so if I just put it here, you know, it kind of looks a little disconnected. Okay, so I'll probably put it over there. Okay, I wanted to show that because I know when I was teaching classes, some people struggled with that. They didn't really understand why we do a visual triangle. I mean, everybody knows what a triangle looks like, but they didn't understand why. And so I always say, well, it completes the circle. <laughs> a triangle completes the circle. So you can think of it that way. So basically what it does is just making your eye go bing, 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 bing. <laughs> okay, that's what it does. Okay, just keeps your eye moving. And then, of course, that's why we do um, clusters in three. Because, again, it creates another. You have a triangle within a triangle. Okay, that's what that means. Okay. So, what else did I want to talk about? I made a couple notes. Okay. So, do you want to see how you can take, if you don't know what to do, take a cue from what you already did? And I know I say that all the time. But you see here where I have dots in my title. 
and I had dots here and I had dots on my ribbon. So when I picked a border sticker, I went ahead and picked something that had dots. It just keeps it repetitive. Okay. And then another little tip is if you have diagonals on your page, which I have these blue diagonals up here, when you're using a, an embellishment with a diagonal, it doesn't have to be diagonal. It could, well, diagonals are a directional motif. So have your diagonals, no matter what product you're using, have them all going in the same direction. Okay. And then it'll look like it was intentional. Okay. Because it was. Okay. And just more pleasing if all your direct, if all your diagonals are going in the same direction. Same way if you're using, like say if you're using arrows on a page. You want all your arrows facing the same direction unless there's something specifically you want it to point to. But if you just want direction, you would have everything pointing in the same direction. Okay, that's just a little tip. Okay, now let's talk about this alpha, which that was just one of the ones I had picked on my sheets. And you would be proud. I didn't go with thickers. I just went with flat alphas. And the reason I did, with, did that is because I knew I wanted to use these craft word stickers and they're kind of thick so I thought well to balance that out because then this embellishment here this butterfly it's on foam and that's on foam so I thought well I better not add another thicker okay but I wanted to say something about when you're using when you're pulling out your alphas you know you can use your alphas as embellishments too and I'll show you here okay so saying these thickers here I'll flip these over. You know, always afraid because your things are falling off. You see these little embellishments, these little, well, they'd be commas and periods. And sometimes you'll have leftovers because you just simply can't use them all. Or especially these exclamation points. I don't always use a lot of exclamation points on my pages. So you can use these little things as embellishments. These little white periods or, you know, at the bottom of an exclamation point, they could really be in substitution of what, wherever you would use an enamel dot. Okay? So don't forget... Especially when you're working with a specific kit with a specific number of items, you know, you really don't want to go anywhere, you know, to get anything else out of your room. You can, but you don't have to. So if you need a little something, you know, again, don't forget to look at the numbers and all these little shapes. These plus signs can be used as X's. These percentage can be, see, you can make X's and O's, hugs and kisses just with that, okay? And these you can just use as a little embellishment somewhere. See what I'm saying? So, don't forget to look at your alphas, you know, your alpha sheets, your thicker sheets. If you need a little pop of color, these little, because half the time we don't even use those, okay? So don't forget, don't overlook those. Okay, so that was my tip on that. Okay, so I told you about the score tape for the ribbon, and I told you about these, and I cut off, and I'm going to leave these, and I'm going to carry these forth to the next page. And something else I'm going to carry forth to the next page is when I was designing my page, and after I had my back where I was going to do my ribbon and my strips, I pulled out stickers. And, you know, I do the wax paper trick. And so I laid out all my stickers or all my embellishments and I kind of group them together how I want because it's easier to group things on wax paper than to put it on your actual page and then have to move it back up okay especially with breads you know you know sometimes breads will be like this well you can't really see so I'll flatten my breads and I'll put them on wax paper I'll say oh that's going to go there that's going to go there okay so I will design on wax paper and then transfer it over and so these are the ones I had left over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these on this wax paper and I'm going to have these two scraps and I'm going to carry that forth to the next page exactly like that okay so I think that was all my notes oh one more thing okay now here is how you can use this series an idea in the future so when you come up with your basic bone design and you're like before you started hearing things down and you like that snap a picture of that Okay, and then when your finished page is done, snap that. And then you can just start keeping a little filing system because this is such a basic design. You could honestly scrap for two months. Well, maybe not two months, but you could scrap many, many pages just with this right here. Okay, because you can move it up, move it down, you can rotate it. <laughs> it's just options, options, options. So many different ways. So my suggestion is, especially if something like of a basic page design is just not something you can wing, go ahead and take a photo of your basic page design, you know, the, the bones, and then 
your finished page and then print them off or somehow keep them on your computer somewhere wherever you look through. You know, I don't like things on the computer. I like things in hand. And so that way you can reference back to it and you can keep repeating the series over and over and over and over again. Okay, does that make sense? So sometimes, I mean, I've been scrapbooking a long time, so I know what my go-to designs are, but until you start knowing what your go-to designs are, if you like a page, take a photo of it and keep repeating it. Okay, so I think that is it for this page. I mean, so everything I used, other than my enamel dots, but that's one of our finishing touches. I don't even put them in kits anymore. That's just something we use. I Everything was my kit, and I used my punch. I used ribbon. I used a border sticker. Now, one thing I did want to say. Oh, I forgot to say one other thing. While I was creating my page, the one thing I kept to my left was my scraps because I knew that was going to be extra mileage for me and then also to remember our bonus sheet I kept that to my side and guess what I already used my bonus sheet because as I put this ribbon on I was like well I need a pop of green and so that's why that bonus sheet always comes in handy I have done types you know kits and series like this for a long time and I always you always need a buffer <laughs> so just if you need to use it right off the bat, which I did, I did. So what did I do? I had a circle punch laying right to my, on my, near my desk. And I just used my circle punch because I thought maybe not everybody pulled an edge punch. Okay. So I thought what I would do is I would show a shape punch. And then I just simply, I just punched a circle and I cut it in half. And that was part of my cluster here. And then that was my, my foundation for my journaling strip. So Yes, I already cut into my bonus sheet. Okay, don't be afraid to. That's what it's here for. If you want to use the whole thing right off your on layout one, go right ahead. There is no wrong way to do this kit. Okay, so we are done with layout one. I hope you are playing along. And if not, that's okay. You can pick it up and do it whenever you have time. Summer's busy for everyone. Okay, so now here's the thing. If you're on a roll and you like this design and you don't want to wait till Thursday to create a page, do the same background. I mean, honestly, with with different papers. I mean, you can do that. So your two-page gals, what did you do? Well, your left would probably look like this, and your right would probably look like exactly the same. Your photos could be in any arrangement, okay? I think that was it. Other than, you know, if you didn't have a vertical or a horizontal photo, you could simply had to use a vertical. You just switch things around a little bit. No wrong way to do it. So I think that's it. That wraps up layout one for our 4 for 4 series. So come back on Tuesday. No, today's Tuesday. Come back on Thursday and we will do layout 2, which will have two photos. But again, don't stress it. If you want to just use one photo, you can. If you want to use four, you can. If you want to do a two page, you can. Okay. And again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and let's all scrap and have fun together. Okay. That's all I have for today. Come back to RTS on Thursday. Okay. Because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.